Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from MGMT called Little Dark Age. I remember vividly the last time I covered MGMT on this channel. Now, most of you probably don't. That was very, very early on in my critic career here on YouTube, before I even had a proper camera. And thus, me taking a pretty lukewarm at best stance on a critical darling band got me a small but significant backlash, even if history seems to have proven me right on this. Part of the problem is that I was never really a huge MGMT fan. There were some great moments on Oracular Spectacular. Congratulations has only warmed on me in recent years, and it's probably underrated, but I wouldn't exactly call it great. And in contrast, I've only soured on the self-titled record more and more. Part of it was the return of producer Dave Fridman continuing his embrace of blown out, more compressed sound that he worked a far greater effect with the Flaming Lips that same year on The Terror. But the larger part of it was the sense that MGMT were falling towards a bait and switch trope in psychedelic rock that I've never really liked all that much. I get the appeal in using the quasi surreal gloss or something dark and twisted beneath it, but it's like a lot of shock horror. It doesn't really have the same replay value for me, especially when the tunes just didn't coalesce as a whole. I said in that review that MGMT were continuing on a path to alienate a lot of their audiences, but the truth is that they just weren't playing to a lot of their strengths. They had a great knack for pop hooks and the willingness to embrace some weird text textures and ideas, and when you compromise a lot of the former to indulge in more of the latter, well, I'm sorry, it doesn't always help you in the long term. And thus, I actually found it really interesting that five years later, it seems like MGMT had pulled a 180, teaming up with Patrick Wimberly of Chairlift and Ariel Pink of all people, another guy who can struggle to hold the right balance between a lot of his textures and his phenomenal hooks, and then they're making more of a synth pop album. And hell, while I like Psychedelia, this sounded so so much more up my alley, I really wanted to check it out before now. So, alright, what did MGMT manage to deliver on Little Dark Age? Alright, here's the thing. I can make the very credible argument that this is easily the most I've enjoyed an MGMT record in years. Hell, probably the most I've ever enjoyed an MGMT album. It's tight, the hooks are as strong as ever, there's a ton of texture and personality, and while it could feel a little a feel for some of the more psychedelic leaning fans, it shows that the duo are just as adept in adapting the sound as any other group. But note the word adapting here, and this is why where folks who aren't in the know might miss some of the greater point, because this is not that far removed at all from a modern Ariel Pink project, and he does deserve some credit for pioneering more of the sound more than MGMT do. But on the flip side, it's been a while since Ariel Pink has delivered a project as consistent as Little Dark Age, and that comes more from the compositions of MGMT than anybody else, so yeah, I'll give them credit for a pretty great little album. And to illustrate that the best, I think we're going to start off with the lyrics and themes this time around. And where so much of Ariel Pink's work has embraced a pretty bleak sense of craven nihilism, which definitely comes through in his co-writing on When You Die, MGMT, they're surprisingly up beat on this album, or at least looking in that direction in contrast with the alienating tactics they took on their self-titled project. Now there are some darker ideas, the title track highlights how the poisonous rot of a dark secret doesn't just go away, or time spent looking at my phone is exactly about what you think it would be, but in both cases it's more reflexive and self-critical than just lecturing the youth about staring at their phones. Hell, there's a greater sense of balance and moderation all over this project, taking a slightly more reasoned approach to confronting wild flings of negative of emotionality, or at least a little bit more willing to call themselves out on their own nonsense on songs like She Works Out Too Much. Sure, she might be kind of obsessed with her fitness and her image, but she's doing it to make herself feel better, and having the female vocals directly counter MGMT on the hook highlighting how he could do better himself, that was kind of a novel choice, especially with how she's the one who ultimately ends it through all the chintzy exercise video framing by saying, yeah, we're done, or take the confrontation of suicidal thoughts and fear on one thing left to try, or even the surprising amount of poise that handles current politics on Handed Over, basically saying that you could have predicted the swing rightward after 2016, and yet there will be a sharp pivot back to correct from it given the extremes there, and it's best that those currently in power just 
handed over peacefully. Hell, When Your Small directly addresses the band's history itself, as they consciously admit that they tried to alienate their audience, crave the ground again, but it's a hell of a lot harder when you're at that level to succeed and work your way back up. And even if they were enabled so they didn't have the consequences or know why at their peak, there is still a flexibility and freedom that comes with success that shouldn't just be pushed aside or dismissed. And that reason, populism, and rationality, that's a nice balance to the sillier tunes like James or Me and Michael. More about friendship and upbeat support than anything else. Now granted, that might be a tad difficult to really ascertain or get your mind around if you're not familiar with the instrumental palette on display. So let's dig into the production here. And here's the thing. If you're not familiar with the off-key, gummy synths blasting up against the ascending bass line that opens up the album, it can kind of feel a little discordant and alienating, especially with that meaty post-chorus saxophone line that I really liked. But those of us familiar with Ariel Pink will recognize that sound and tone and texture just with the higher gloss fidelity and Dave Fridman mixing the drums and percussion into more fizzy, compressed blocks, as he typically does. And let me make this clear, Fridman's smeared over, blocky style doesn't always click on the project, especially when the song falls apart in your hands like the buzzy synths that end the otherwise cheesy and chipper me and Michael with the gleaming melodic interplay that I otherwise really like, or that piano accented minor key breakdown on One Thing Left to Try, which kind of kills the upbeat momentum given the spacey synthesizers, the much quicker tempo courtesy of the guitar, and an overall terrific groove. And then there's Days That Got By, a borderline instrumental piece that meanders entirely too much with its gummy, warping chiptune and undercooked dreamy vibe. It could have just been an interlude, I would have been fine with that. But you know what? When this album delivers and when it gets tighter, I'm really on board. The title track is the immediate standout, tilting into a certain pseudo-gothic hollowness courtesy of the wiry, off-kilter synth groove and a phenomenally catchy hook. And when you follow it with the weird, oddly jaunty guitar phrases, both acoustic and electric on When You Die, especially with that vocal line, it becomes remarkably endearing for a song telling me to go fuck myself. Follow it up with a fat bass and the Daft Punk-esque vocoders on the warp chiptune funk of time spent looking at my phone, or the dreamy, borderline wistful synthesizers, acoustic guitar, and arranged instrumentation on When You're Small, and the filmy layers and remarkably well-textured French horn interlude on James, and you wind up with a set of groove-heavy, remarkably sharp little pop compositions. And you know, a huge part of this needs to be chalked up to Andrew Van Wingarden, a singer that I've never really found all that impressive, but his willingness to contort his tone from a rich baritone on James to a slightly more manic and unstable mid-range on that title track or When We Die, to a timbre that's not far removed from a girl group singer on One Thing Left to Try, especially with some of that production around him? Yeah, you know what? I'm on board. He won me over probably more than he ever has before. So in summary, okay look, it has been years since I've actively praised anything for MGMT, and I don't think that I've ever really been a serious fan of the band, but Little Dark Age is the real damn deal, and exactly the right sort of pivot for this group, it nearly won me over as a fan, flattering their pop sensibilities while bringing terrific, detailed, complex melodies, and a great sense of diversity and production to the forefront. It's wildly colorful, the writing is sharp and noticeably more mature and measured, and a shift in this direction opens a ton of doors up for the band going forward. Even if you can tell they're eagerly anticipating the end of their label deal after their next album so they can, as they themselves described in an interview, enter the David Byrne stage of their career, of which I'm not really sure they can convincingly hold up. They have still more of a pop band at their core. But you know what? That will come later. For now, I think it's an 8 out of 10 and definitely a recommendation for anybody looking to get back on board with MGMT. And for those of you, like me, who never really got on board the first time beyond electric feel and kids, yeah, you know what? It's worth it. Definitely check this out. It's a lot of fun. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Yeah, this is the real deal. I'm actually a little bit surprised how much I like this in comparison with, well, anything else MGMT has put out. So yeah, buy the record. Links in the description below. And I got the poll up there where all the rest of you diehard MGMT fans tell me how wrong I am. Actually, I think you guys are going to be pretty happy they're just a return to form. So we'll probably be on the same page there. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. If you guys want to get involved in supporting my channel or my scheduling process, link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. More details right there, but till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.